Good day, my name is Toti Mainen. I will be showing you how to create your own model of the human brain. Firstly, for this assignment, I was put to the test to be as creative as possible using objects or other material that I already had in my household. Being at rest meant that I have um, a limited amount of resources, so I had to be as creative as possible. To make my model of the human brain, I used flour, toilet tissue, and water. The amount of which will de of each ingredient will depend on the size that you want your model to be. Because I wanted a large model, I made sure that I make enough tissue dough. So firstly, I tore my tissue. I used roughly about one and a half tissue rolls. I then added all those tissues into a bucket and added water to make it easier to mold. But this alone is not enough. So I had to add flour so that it becomes much easier to mold. My reason for using flour in my mixture is because tissue alone will not do. Once the water and the tissue begin the water from the tissue drains it becomes much harder to carve the details of the brain into my mold so i had to add dough in order to make it much easier to mold and make all these details into my dough um so this took me roughly three days because i had to well mold it and then leave it for about a day and a half and make it make sure that it kind of dries up but not completely so i can you know make all these details nice and visible this part of the brain is known as the frontal lobe it is responsible for personality thinking planning and problem solving this part of the brain is known as the partial lobe which is which controls movement sensations such as pain taste touch etc speed and writing this part of the brain is known as the occupa occupational lobe which controls memory sight and smell this part of the brain is known as the cerebellum, which controls movement, balance, and muscles. This small part of the brain is not entirely part of the brain, but it is, however, the spinal cord. It is part of the spinal cord. Um, and then this, which, yeah, which this part of the brain is known as the temporal lobe which controls speech and hearing during this assignment i have learned three things namely i've learned to practice patience because at the beginning of this assignment when i started off doing my assignment i thought it would take me roughly two days to get it over and done with but i then realized that it will take me two days just to dry my tissue dough and that was longer than expected but it needed to be done so I, would, I had to be patient enough um, leaving it outside to get you know wind so that I can dry up putting it by the heater so that the heat could help um, evaporate all the water from the dough I've also learned that the brain is responsible for a lot when it comes to the human body. It plays a very big role. It is responsible for some hormonal production. It is responsible for telling our bodies that we are full or we are hungry or we are thirsty. You understand? And sometimes if the brain fails to do so, people end up overeating over consuming because that hormone in the brain that is supposed to tell them that they are full does not tell them that they are full so they just keep consuming they keep consuming and they think they're hungry whereas they're not really 
but because the brain is unable to communicate with the body and tell the body that it is full and it is enough, they are unable to do so, thus leading to illnesses such as obesity and such. I have also learned that the brain is also responsible for life. Um, we often hear people in, well, doctors in series and movies saying a person is brain dead. And, well, all I thought back back then, all I thought was that, well, when a person is brain dead, well, it just means that their brain is not functioning, then they'll probably not be able to talk. But it goes beyond that because now I, I get to realize that, well, most functions such as movement and talking, yes, talking, thinking, doing one of the, like some of the basic things in life, they become unable to do because their brains are unable to communicate with the body. This while leading to a disability. Thank you. While doing this assignment, I have come across an uncertainty on whether someone is truly able to multitask. Is it possible for one to, for one to listen to a lecture and cook at the same time that is the question am i able to do both tasks that are unrelated at the same time it is possible for one to well to cook while watching a cooking video on how to cook and how to go about it but is it possible for someone to do two tasks that are unrelated at the same time, such as listening to a lecture and cooking at the same time. Will I be able to process that information that I am receiving from the lecture session and truly process it and understand what is going on and still pay attention and do what I'm supposed to do with the pots? And that is the uncertainty that I have come across during this period. I also learned that training my brain can be somewhat a difficult task because as I have mentioned in the beginning that I thought that it would only take me roughly two days to complete this assignment. Instead, it took me longer than two days to complete it. So I, I had to practice patience and, you know, learn how to wait and try also trust in the process because I kept looking at my my tissue dough and I felt as though it was just taking too much time to dry and I needed it done urgently but seeing as day by day it was busy drying and things were coming along well my frustration levels kind of also went down and I stopped stressing as much as I was at the beginning, seeing that everything... Also, I was stressing about how I was going to mold it, but then thinking outside the box and not doing things the way we used to doing things helped a lot. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you.